Welcome to the presentation today on key components of a tech-enabled post-acute solution. I'm Dr. Pullum, I'm one of the medical directors at Bioforma. Spent the last 10 years building virtual care solutions, starting with uh, CHO for admission programs, as well as uh, AI-enabled uh, clinical decision tools for providers at the point of care, and more recently, uh, virtual care delivery platform. So today we're gonna kind of walk through what are the key components of a technology solution that allows you to scale uh, post-acute uh, care management solutions for patients uh, in your in your system. So, you know, traditionally, uh, you're used to seeing command centers that are staffed 24-7 and a lot of resources that are going into managing uh, the information that is coming back from your, uh, you know, remote settings where patients are being monitored. So our goal is to help alleviate some of that burden on uh, the staffing resources and the monitoring that's required to uh, enable these kind of uh, more efficient workflows when the patients are not in front of you. So the key components that we're gonna talk about today are one in terms of uh, the gathering of the, the data from the patients when they're not in front of you, so the remote um, uh, care uh, monitoring piece, uh, as well as the logistics around uh, deploying and retrieving and sanitizing devices so that you can operate a program where you're not having to deal with those kind of logistic issues. So those are the key components that we're going to focus on today. Uh, and one of the things that separates uh, Bioformis' platform or solution is the end-to-end -end solution that we offer, uh, starting from the uh, uh, devices that are uh, paired with the, uh, the program. So we rely on continuous data. So in, in the post-acute setting, uh, patients are uh, essentially given an armband that is worn 24-7 and is uh, sending us continuous biometric data, um, uh, heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, et cetera. And that data is then going into our analytics platform, which is FDA cleared, that allows us to um, detect early deterioration on a patient's health in a disease agnostic fashion. And I'll share more details about what that means in terms of operations. But that data then is uh, uh, fed into our clinician facing tools that allow you to not only receive uh, and set alerts based on static thresholds for your vitals, but it also includes our FDA cleared biovitals index that is showing a disease deterioration in patients that may be at risk for an adverse event if uh, you know, actions are not taken uh, in a timely manner. And then we also have clinical services to wrap around that uh, platform that allows you to augment your team with our own clinical staff. So we have uh, multiple levels. We have a unlicensed um, care navigators that are there to maintain uh, patient compliance and adherence to these programs, as well as um, escalating internal internally to our teams, which include nurses and advanced practitioners. Uh, like I mentioned before, we also include the logistics and uh, EMR integration services as well. So one of the key um, challenges with um, the way uh, post-acute programs, RPM programs have been set up in the past is relying on you know, sporadic episodic data, which is great, but as more and more um, you know, um, uh, institutions are challenged with transitioning kind of uh, uh, patients with more acute needs into these post-acute settings, uh, we're finding that it's relevant to uh, make sure that uh, relying on these uh, advanced tools to uh, improve operational efficiency uh, helps to manage these patients at scale. So that's why we use continuous data as a differentiator with our platform versus others that you may have been familiar with. And that continuous data is feeding into our, uh, our algorithms, but we also can pair that with episodic data from blood pressure cuffs, weight scales, pulse locks, et cetera. So if you already have devices in the ecosystem, we can include those data sources. Uh, but the core key components of our solution includes a, a mobile hub, uh, essentially, uh, uh, a lockdown uh, mobile device that acts as the source for retrieving and collecting data from our wearables and then transmits it to our cloud to be visible by our doctors. And that uh, information is displayed uh, in our clinician um, dashboards that allows you to intervene in a personal way with the patient's uh, needs. Um, so moving forward, what we are uh, relying on is that AI cleared uh, algorithm that I mentioned before, and the Biovitals Index is actually a, a predictive um, algorithm that uh, you know, after the algorithm is actually looking at data coming in in real time and is highlighting certain uh, patients that may be at risk for deterioration. For example, uh, this is a patient uh, that has been um, uh, discharged from the hospital uh, as a heart failure patient. And within the first couple days, 
the signals at the top of this uh, uh, image uh, where it's highlighted in red, that's when the y vitals index crosses a certain threshold of uh, 0.7. And the reason that it becomes important is until that happened, there were some activity that was underlying that was not significant clinically. That's why those prior signals didn't exceed that threshold. But once it did, the care team was able to reach out and, and contact the patient, and they found out that this was actually due to uh, med you know, poor medication adherence. The patient forgot to take the medication on time, so this started to create some indicators that our algorithm detected and highlighted as a potential need for outreach to this patient. So that was fixed, and then a couple days later, uh, several alerts fired off, and this resulted in the patient um, you know, having to be transferred to uh, the hospital uh, and actually managed. So it wasn't a readmission, it was more to manage them in a more acute setting, uh, and then they were transitioned back home, and then the patient stabilized. So that's literally how this index works. So you were able to uh, manage literally hundreds of patients where you know typically a, a, a nurse or somebody monitoring these patients are uh, limited today to about 20 patients uh, with, with these type of tools and the intelligence in this platform, uh, you can now manage hundreds of patients. Now, the other component of these alerts is what we call our smart alerts, smart alerts. So these are independent thresholds that are set for each of the biometric uh, measures that you're looking for. Except in this case, um, you know, rather than just setting a static threshold, we are only alerting when there is um, underlying information that indicates that this uh, exceeded a threshold because of some you know, uh, physiologic parameter, not because of you know, extra activity. For example, in this image here, you'll see uh, when where the green circles are, the biovitals index exceeded that threshold because there was no correlating underlying activity that could have influenced that increase in heart rate, for example. So this is just one example of how these um, analytics are being used to reduce um, you know, uh, alert burden, reduce false alerts, and only highlight clinically relevant triggers that your care team uh, needs to manage when appropriate. Um, and then that information obviously is being displayed in the dashboard, and this dashboard includes uh, status on the, the wearable, uh, the connectivity, so that's used by our compliance teams to make sure that the device is charged and is being um, used properly, as well as the relevant vital signs that are necessary for the patient. And the post-acute solution also includes um, certain kind of uh, alarms and uh, reminders to manage the patients appropriately based on what their uh, care plans and needs are. The, the, the devices are also then, um, uh, the mobile devices that the patients have are also acting as the interface that allow them to uh, you know, answer questionnaires and provide uh, feedback um, besides just the biometric data. The dashboard also then is uh, utilized by the care teams to communicate with the patients through that mobile app. So the mobile app acts as interface. So if a patient needs to do outreach, they can initiate a text or uh, a chat, um, but they cannot initiate a video call that is dependent on the need, the clinical team can actually start that video call. So the doc so doctors are, or the nurses are in control of what that experience look, looks like, but the patients are always connected through that um, uh, text or, or um, uh, chat functionality that's built into the application. Um, Similarly, once the um, patient's experience is done, the key factor here is, for example, in terms of the embedded workflow, you have the ability to request an order for the uh, remote kits to be um, uh, captured in the EMR. For example, when a patient is ready to be transitioned home, uh, the order is captured in the EMR, we receive that, and then we ship the kits out directly to the patient's home. The patients are then onboarded with our remote teams to make sure that everything is connected. So there's uh, literally, once the order is placed, uh, there's no more uh, effort on the uh, health system partners to uh, make sure that the patient is successfully onboarded. So that's part of our wraparound services that we offer beyond just our analytics platform, is to make sure that you know patients receive the kits. Once the program is successfully completed, uh, they can actually ship the kits back, be sanitized, and then put them back into circulation. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, please reach out and uh, let us know how we can help you. Thank you.